In the world of weight loss, there are countless approaches to dieting, but some don't agree with the concept of any restriction when it comes to losing weight. You've probably heard people say, Don't diet, just listen to your body. My body tells me what I need and I'm skinny and happy and life is great. Well, good for you. But let me ask you this. How can I listen to my body now if I've spent years overeating, gaining weight and not listening? Do I even hear it anymore? I only want to listen to the grossest parts of my body. Well, today we will explore the idea of listening to our bodies through the lens of intuitive eating approach. Can it work for weight loss, especially for those struggling with lifelong obesity? Hello, my dears, and welcome. I'm Marina, a registered dietitian, here to help all you weight loss warriors out there. As I walk the path myself, my mission is to help and guide you on your weight loss journey. Today, we will debate on intuitive eating and present its limitation when it comes to obesity and weight loss. Intuitive eating is an alternative to dieting that has received increased attention in recent years, although it isn't a yesterday's idea. The term was coined in 1995 as a title of a book by Evelyn Triboli and Elise Resch. The basic idea behind intuitive eating is that if we listen to our bodies, they intrinsically know how much and what kind of food we need to stay healthy. Put simply, you eat when you're physically hungry and stop when you are satiated without restriction on calories or types of food. Die, calories, die! Intuitive eating principles are somewhat philosophical as they encourage individuals to eat mindfully and pay attention to their body's internal hunger cues. They also propose to reject diet mentality, honoring your hunger and satiety, respecting your body regardless of weight, and honoring your health with so-called gentle nutrition where you eat food that tastes good but also make you feel good. So far, so good. But here's the problem. You're always finding something to whine about. Intuitive eating stands as a holistic approach that helps foster a healthy relationship with food and your body and was never intended as a weight loss strategy, but many people on social media today promote it as such. They suggest that by accurately interpreting and adhering to your body signals, you should maintain or achieve a normal and healthy body weight, neither under eating nor overeating. Now, don't get me wrong, intuitive eating sounds great and natural and how we should eat or at least where we should be headed. But for many people, especially those battling obesity and trying to lose weight, intuitive eating simply won't work. Explain. There are major limitations to intuitive eating and weight loss that we will cover, but first, let me vent a little. Influencers and dietitians proposing the intuitive eating lifestyle as a sole weight loss strategy are usually slim, never had a weight problem, or a big appetite. They also possess more than a general understanding of balanced nutrition as the majority of them meticulously track their calorie and nutrient intake for years prior to intuitive eating. And then they intuitively crave teeny tiny salads while preach to the rest of us that it's all about balance and how they regularly eat cookies and donuts. I especially have a problem with my fellow intuitive eating dietitians who promote themselves as anti-diet practitioners. The anti-diet approach often implies not changing your diet for the sole purpose of weight loss, which can be misleading, especially for individuals struggling with obesity. We know that obesity negatively affects health and shortens lifespan with even a 5 to 10% reduction in body weight being clinically effective in reducing obesity related health risks and this reduction is already a weight loss success. Yes, many people struggle with disordered eating patterns or practice fad diets that put them on a restrict binge cycle and lead to weight yo-yoing, which isn't good. But more people worldwide are obese and need our help. Why we are suddenly rejecting all diets when literature on healthy eating patterns clearly shows that some diets like the Mediterranean and DASH diet are healthy and helpful. 
For example, a moderate calorie-restricted Mediterranean diet can lead to weight loss and sustained health improvements. Why this need to be radical in approaches and refuse any type of restriction when it comes to food intake as though we are not living in an obesogenic environment? I agree with intuitive eating's emphasis on moving away from labeling foods as good or bad and promoting a healthier relationship with food, as this mindset can help individuals develop more balanced and less obsessive eating habits. However, there is a tendency to overcorrect by completely avoiding discussion about the nutritional profiles of foods to avoid being labeled as proponents of diet culture. Yes, specific foods eaten here or there don't matter as much as the overall dietary patterns that impact our well-being. But if someone's dietary pattern consists of high-calorie, high-fat and high-sugar foods, advising them to change this pattern and possibly lose weight shouldn't be seen as diet culture but as a common sense. This doesn't mean imposing rigid food rules or moral judgments, but rather providing practical guidance for healthier eating. We are dietitians, and as healthcare professionals, our primary focus should be on improving health outcomes rather than simply making people feel good about their current state. This doesn't mean we should lack empathy, rather it means we have a responsibility to provide advice that promotes long-term health. Telling patients that weight loss is unnecessary or ineffective can be dangerous and irresponsible, especially given the well-documented health benefits associated with even modest weight loss. Our role as health workers is to prioritize health over feelings, though with sensitivity and understanding. While we should support our patients in building a positive relationship with food and their bodies, we must also be honest about the health risk associated with obesity and the benefits of weight loss. Advising otherwise is not only misguided, but can also undermine our commitment to enhancing the well-being of those we aim to help. Rejecting all dietary intervention because they might be seen as diet culture does a disservice to those who need structured guidance to achieve and maintain a healthy weight. There! I said it! <sighs> okay, moving on. First limitation of intuitive eating in regards to obesity and weight loss are hunger signals. The intuitive eating approach promotes eating in response to physical hunger and honoring your hunger. However, for people with weight problem, recognizing physical hunger is problematic. Research shows that individuals with obesity are more sensitive to hunger and less sensitive to satiety compared to those with normal weight. This discrepancy is due to hormonal dysregulations, especially concerning hunger and weight-regulating hormones. Ghrelin, often called the hunger hormone, stimulates appetite. Higher levels mean greater hunger. After a meal, ghrelin levels decrease, reducing hunger. However, researchers show that in obese individuals, postprandial suppression of ghrelin is lower compared to normal weight people, meaning they do not experience as strong a decrease in hunger after eating, which can contribute to difficulties in regulating food intake. So, to eat intuitively and satisfy that hunger, an obese person will probably have to eat more, which contradicts the goal of weight loss. Calories, 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 calories. And when we are in a calorie deficit to lose weight, those levels of ghrelin will further rise, making us even hungrier. So again, intuitive eating cannot work. There's an additional issue with hormones such as insulin and leptin. Leptin signals the brain to reduce appetite when energy stores are sufficient, while insulin signals satiety after eating by indicating adequate energy. In obesity, levels of insulin and leptin are elevated. Elevated leptin should increase satiety and decrease food intake in obese individuals, but again, it doesn't, due to improper hormone function, a phenomenon known as leptin resistance. Leptin is produced by fat cells in proportion to their size. More fat cells mean higher leptin levels. 
elevated leptin should signal the brain that enough energy is stored and it's time to stop eating. However, in obesity, the brain becomes less responsive to leptin, failing to receive the signals and thinking we are starving, which leads to eating more and moving less. Oh, why am I so hungry? In addition, insulin resistance can develop. Prolonged overeating forces the pancreas to produce more insulin to prevent harmful blood sugar levels. Over time, cells become less sensitive to insulin, causing both insulin and blood sugar levels to rise. This leaves cells feeling starved of energy and drives your appetite for more food. Thus, resistance to leptin and insulin in obesity disrupts these hunger and satiety signals, which can lead to persistent feeling of hunger and overeating. That's not fair. Think about it. If you have a big appetite and you already feel hungrier than normal weight people, practicing intuitive eating would mean eating until you feel satisfied. But isn't that how we became obese in the first place? False. No, wait, maybe it's true. Furthermore, during weight loss phase, leptin levels will decrease and signal the brain that our fat cells are shrinking, making us even hungrier. Managing this hunger is challenging, yet possible, but eating intuitively and responding to physical hunger cues during weight loss becomes mission impossible. Now, she speaks truthfully. The reality is, effective weight loss requires some level of cognitive restraint in food intake, which eating intuitively does not promote. Additionally, some obese individuals fall under the so-called low satiety phenotype, reporting weak satiety from a well-balanced meal or even increased hunger after eating. Intuitive eating in those cases could mean actual further weight gain and developing additional health risks because of obesity that are well documented in the literature. And yes, intuitive eating says honor your hunger and reject diet mentality. But it also emphasizes honoring and respecting your body. And if your body is affected by obesity and you have health problems because of your weight, actively trying to lower it is honoring your body and your life. Now, it's important to recognize that intuitive eating emphasizes distinguishing between true physical hunger and emotional hunger, which is also important for weight management. Emotional hunger occurs when individuals eat in response to emotion, and obesity and emotional eating are connected. One could argue that in order to become obese, one didn't listen their physical hunger and rather ate for other reasons, which is fair and true. You ate your feeling. But all those hormonal stuff we just mentioned also stand on their own. So one positive doesn't negate negative. Another limitation of intuitive eating concerning obesity and weight loss is its approach to gentle nutrition, which advocates making food choices that honor health, taste good, and make you feel good. According to one non diet dietitian, this approach encourages adding nutrient-dense foods without restriction on enjoyable foods like cookies or donuts. She suggests that over time, cravings for these foods stop and are replaced by a preference for healthier options like vegetable stir-fry. Again, sounds amazing, and for some people it might work, but for most battling obesity, this is not a reality. First of all, many people struggling with weight may lack nutritional knowledge beyond crash diets, making it difficult for them to choose nutrient-dense and satiating foods. Moreover, foods like cookies, burger, ice cream, and cakes are considered hyperpalatable foods. Hyperpalatable foods combine high levels of fat, sugar, sodium, and or carbohydrates to trigger the brain's reward system, encouraging excessive eating. Those foods are designed to be intensely tasty and rewarding. Secret junk food time! Research indicates that consuming hyperpalatable foods can activate the brain's reward system, leading to heightened cravings and potential overeating. When these foods are consumed, the neurons in the reward region become very active, creating highly positive feelings of pleasure so that people want to keep seeking these foods regularly. 
Hyperpalatable foods can also modify the release of hormones that regulate appetite, stress and metabolism. This response is natural as our brains are evolutionary programmed to seek out calorie-dense foods that were historically scarce. But in today's food environment, hyperpalatable foods are abundant, affordable and heavily marketed which can lead to difficulties in regulating appetite and satiety. These foods can override physical hunger cues and interfere with hormonal signals that control appetite. And regular consumption of these foods may distort this signal further, perpetuating cravings even when the body has consumed sufficient calories. So, pairing hyperpalatable foods, distorted hunger signals, and intuitive eating, which way you think this is going to go? Not down the scale. I guess I could do without eating so much junk. Integrating hyperpalatable foods with intuitive eating, which promotes unconditional permission to eat based on internal cues, will not support weight loss goals. While overly restrictive diets can lead to unhealthy binge cycles, some form of dietary restraint and portion control are crucial in achieving the calorie deficit necessary for weight loss. Hyperpalatable foods are energy dense but can still be a part of our weight loss journey if eaten less often and in smaller quantities. But that, unfortunately, doesn't mean honoring every signal and craving because for the most of us, that would be all the time. There is room for somewhat controlled flexibility, but not in terms of intuitive eating with unconditional permission to eat everything we want or crave, because again, that's how we became obese in the first place. He once again, science saves the day. Now let's look at some data on intuitive eating and weight loss. A small trial by Anglin included sedentary obese individuals divided into two groups, where one group was prescribed standard 500 calorie restriction diet and other group was given instructions based on the principles of intuitive eating. In the first three weeks of the study, all the participants either maintained or lost weight. But further along, group with standard restriction diet maintained this trend throughout the study while some of the participants in the intuitive eating group experienced weight gain. The study revealed that total weight loss was statistically greater in a calorie restricted group and other concludes that the calorie restriction approach appears to be superior to the intuitive eating approach for weight loss. Another meta-analysis of 10 studies compared conventional weight loss programs using calorie restriction with intuitive eating strategies. The analysis concluded that while mindful and intuitive eating approaches were effective for weight loss compared to no intervention, they did not show a significant difference in weight reduction when compared directly with conventional weight loss programs. Another trial involving 40 women by Messenger and colleagues assigned participants either to a weight loss program or a weight neutral program. Weight loss program emphasized calorie restrictions, whereas the weight neutral program emphasized intuitive eating based on internal cues of hunger in society. Reduction in weight occurred in the weight loss group, but not the weight neutral group, but both groups showed an increase in healthy lifestyle behaviors. So, we can conclude that intuitive eating as a standalone weight loss strategy doesn't work for most people. However, to clarify again, while there are benefits to intuitive eating, these benefits are not typically related to weight loss. It was associated with a variety of positive psychological and behavioral outcomes. Studies indicate a positive relationship between intuitive eating and general psychological well-being, improved body image, increased self-esteem and greater enjoyment of eating experiences. Some studies suggest potential improvements in markers like blood pressure and cholesterol levels. However, while intuitive eating promotes a no-food rules approach and unconditional permission to eat, research indicates that this freedom may lead to poorer diet quality and unhealthy food choices in some individuals.
The absence of food rules can contribute to a preference for high-calorie, hyperpalatable foods, which may impact weight management goals negatively. So, to conclude our thoughts, intuitive eating can be a useful approach for those seeking to improve their relationship with food, value holistic health, and are willing to practice mindfulness and self-awareness. Some of the intuitive eating principles could easily be adopted in our weight loss journey, but as a standalone weight loss strategy, for most people, intuitive eating will not work. It's a skill that can be learned, but it could be more appropriate for weight maintenance rather than weight loss. Effective weight loss requires some form of dietary restriction and conscious initial and sustained efforts to change eating habits for good. It requires self-discipline, self-moderation, and often self-monitoring. For most people with weight issues, nothing about this is intuitive. Weight management also involves learning about nutrition and portion control, understanding and relearning about our hunger signals, and going to trials and errors. With time, we can start maybe hearing those distant echoes from our bodies louder and maybe even begin to listen. But in the meantime, knowledge, structure, moderation, discipline, patience, consistency, and mindfulness will be our guiding principle for successful weight loss. Thank you for watching, my dear, and like, comment, subscribe, and share if you found this video truthful and helpful. Let's support each other on our weight loss and life journeys. Until next time. Bye.